Each year, electrical malfunctions account for 35,000 home fires. These fires cause more than 500 deaths, thousands of injuries, and billions of dollars of property damage. And more than half of them could have been prevented with arc fault circuit interrupters. An arc fault is a dangerous electrical problem caused by damaged, overheated, or stressed electrical wiring or devices. They can happen when older wires become frayed or cracked, when a nail or screw damages a wire behind a wall, or when outlets or circuits are compromised. Conventional overcurrent protective devices cannot detect low-level hazardous arcing currents. These arcing currents have the potential to initiate electrical fires, especially in areas of the home you can't see. Arc fault circuit interrupters, or AFCIs, are designed to proactively detect a wide range of arcing electrical faults. And today, AFCIs are required by the National Electrical Code for certain electrical circuits in the home. With AFCIs, homeowners may experience a phenomenon called nuisance tripping. This happens when the AFCI or circuit breaker trips for an unknown reason. Typically, this tripping is caused by wiring issues or incompatibility with electronic devices. Damaged wires, loose connections, or incorrectly wired circuits can cause trip events, so these issues must be corrected. Incompatibility issues can happen when loads produce excessive noise that eventually mimics an arc, so it is recommended all installed electronic devices comply with FCC regulations. If a trip condition occurs, homeowners should first find which circuit the tripped breaker is protecting. When diagnosing a nuisance trip, there are a series of general questions that are important to answer before contacting an electrical contractor. This will save time and reduce the number of visits required to solve the issue. First, identify the breaker with a diagnostic guide. You should also identify the date code as displayed. Turn the circuit breaker off, but be sure not to push the PTT button. Next, check for any obvious load issues on the tripped circuit with a few simple steps. Look for any blackened plugs or outlets. If found, remove all plugs from the outlet and contact an electrical contractor for further investigation. If there are lights on the circuit, check for loose connections between the light bulbs and the sockets. Check for any damage or crimps in the electrical cords plugged in on the circuit. Cords can be damaged if they are pinched in doorways. If an appliance or furniture is pushed against an electrical plug or resting on a cord. Or if a cord is close to a heat source. Next, ensure all bulbs are less than or equal to the maximum wattage rating of the fixture. Higher rated bulbs can cause excessive heat and damage. Unplug all equipment on the affected circuit. Reset the circuit breaker by actuating its handle to the off and then on position. If the circuit breaker trips again, a fault still exists on the circuit. Call an electrical contractor to investigate the issue. If the circuit breaker does not trip after all equipment has been unplugged, try turning on and off each light on the circuit individually and see if the circuit breaker trips. Then plug in non-defective equipment one at a time and turn it on and off to see if that trips the breaker. Surge protectors are recommended to protect devices from electrical voltage surges, and they may also provide the added benefit of filtering unwanted electrical noise. Left unfiltered, this electrical noise could affect the AFCI or GFCI circuit breaker and potentially interfere with or damage other electronics on the circuit. Now that you've gone through some initial troubleshooting, you're ready to contact your electrical contractor. Be sure to give them the answers to the general diagnostic questions. Diagnostics of electrical circuits should only be done by a qualified electrical contractor. The first step in finding the root cause of a circuit breaker trip is to eliminate the most common and routine causes. These are things like loose connections, misapplied or damaged appliances, and incorrectly wired outlets and circuit breakers. First, review the general diagnostics tips. Verify the cause of the trip using the diagnostic indicator on the circuit breaker. 
turn the circuit breaker off, and be sure not to push the PTT button on the circuit breaker. Then turn the circuit breaker on. Check the indicator and record the trip indicator LED lights as shown in the AFCI Diagnostic Guide. Next, make sure the breaker is functioning properly with the test button. If the breaker handle moves between the off and on position, then the circuit breaker is working correctly. If the circuit breaker does not trip, it needs to be replaced. Check the circuit for loose light bulbs. Be sure the line or hot tab on the light sockets make a good connection to the bulb. If not, be sure the light fixture is disconnected from the circuit and bend the hot tab upward slightly so it makes a good connection to the bulb. Then retighten the bulb in the socket. Check the wiring at the circuit breaker load terminal. Ensure the load neutral conductor is properly connected to the neutral terminal of the circuit breaker and the circuit breaker neutral or pigtail is properly connected to the neutral bar. If you have a plug-on neutral AFCI or GFCI circuit breaker, you will not have a panel neutral or pigtail. Next, check the wiring. Be sure a single-pole AFCI circuit breaker is not wired to a multi-wire branch circuit. For multi-wired branch circuits where the neutral is shared between two branch circuits, a two-pole AFCI circuit breaker must be used. You'll also need to check the load center, switches, receptacles, and hardwired lighting or appliances for loose connections. Siemens highly recommends using screw connections for wire termination instead of spring-loaded push-in connections. Ensure all screws and lugs are tightened to specification. Also check the installed wiring for damaged insulation that may expose hot wires to neutral or ground wires. Check all devices for UL and FCC compliance. If you do not see the proper markings, check with the supplier or manufacturer to validate its compliance with FCC for residential environments. It's possible the device is producing enough electrical noise to affect all electronics on the circuit including the AFCI circuit breaker. If the arc fault trip condition continues after all the wiring has been verified, there are a few more steps you can take. Try disconnecting all the loads on the circuit, and then energize each load individually until the AFCI circuit breaker trips. If possible, move the last energized load before the trip to another circuit to see if the trip follows a specific device. When the circuit breaker trips, the most recently energized load is likely producing the arc fault condition. If the circuit breaker still does not trip, test the loads in different combinations. If a combination of loads is required to trip the AFCI circuit breaker, isolate each of the loads again. But this time, test them in combination with a 5 amp resistive load. If the AFCI circuit breaker trips, the isolated load is most likely producing the arc fault. If you are still having trouble finding the source of the trip condition, complete these arc fault diagnostic questions in their entirety, or submit a request through the online support request tool. Answers to these questions are critical to help us understand the type of tripping event. Thank you for watching. For more how-to videos, visit YouTube and enter VoltStream to see the full playlist. Thank you for specifying Siemens.